Hey there, how's everybody doing today? This video was inspired by a couple of things. The first being the Frontier video I made and the section on it regarding the gigantic siege monster within it, La Viente. The second was a conversation I had with a friend about whether or not we wanted to see siege fights brought back in Monster Hunter 6. And I said I was interested in seeing another chance taken with some of the classic giant monsters like Lao Shen Lung, the Morans, stuff like that. Also, I have been working on a script for the Mandalorian Season 3 review, but between not a terrible amount of passion for the project and a current deliberation I have going on internally about whether or not I want to make uh, a secondary kind of etc. channel for my content that's outside of Monster Hunter, these things were kind of killing my momentum on that script and I need to be putting stuff out there. So I switched gears. That's right. I was so passionless for modern Disney Star Wars that I would rather make a video about Lao Shen Lung. So why Lao specifically? Well, to be honest, I like the guy despite the fight. I like what he inspired. I like how he looks. His theme is pretty great. I like what he represents, the scope and the spectacle that existed even at the dawn of the franchise, the potential that existed within it where it could go. And in hindsight, as I'll talk about in a little bit, I would say that even though Lao wasn't great, he led to a lot of very fantastic aspects of Monster Hunter. And I just like a good Monster Hunter redemption story. Taking a monster that was underwhelming in its original incarnation and bringing it up to a brand new heightened standard is one of my favorite things that the fifth generation of Monster Hunter has been doing. Now, Lao's first return was in Generations Ultimates, and that game was more or less a greatest hits album in the form of a Monster Hunter game. So they made a couple of decent changes in giving us fun new siege tools to fight him with, but he himself didn't really get anything new to do. He's still the same big, slow, lumbering beast that lets himself get bitten by us little mosquitoes over and over and over and over to the point of frustration and leaving or death. Cool for a fight or two with friends, but then the, the Lester's kind of gone. But is he doomed to stay this way? Is he fundamentally locked to his fate? Is he an unsalvageable concept? No. Let's take a look at the big monsters we have now. Honestly, they've been getting pretty good. I'd say the Morans are much better than Lao, and Delometer is better than them, and Kolv and Safi are legitimately great fights, and some of the best that World Iceborne has to offer, regardless of the stigma surrounding the grind mechanics on their siege. And although regular Zora Magdros was pretty much a flop, I'll stand by the arch-tempered Zora Magdros encounter. With the time limit it was given, that was a pretty tense and honestly kind of fun fight. And if you look in other places, you have the Berserk La Viente and Frontier, which looks pretty fun from what I've seen in gameplay, if you can resist paralysis, that is. And then if you go one step down in terms of size and go to the Gogmazioses, the Atal Kaz, uh, the Storm Serpents, the Geismagorms, the monsters like that, all of those are looked upon pretty favorably. So the big boy monsters have gotten pretty darn good recently, and Modern Monster Hunter has a good track about updating their older roster of monsters. I think it's as good a time as any to give Lao another shot. Now, this video is coming out far and away too late to have any influence whatsoever on a Monster Hunter 6. Not that these videos really have much of anything to do with influencing the content in these games, but I think this is just going to be a fun experiment to think about how we could push this encounter. And before we begin properly, let me know in the comments below if this is something you'd want to see more of. If there are any monsters out there who simply don't quite click with you, but you really want to love. I'd be willing to turn this into a proper series. So there's a blocker we got to get rid of first that's keeping the Lao Shen Lung fight from being really fun. And that's its context. The Laos we fight are running from Fatalis. The fortress we guard is honestly just in its way. Lao isn't really all that interested in fighting us, so he pretty much just unflinchingly takes the punishment as he tries to get away. The fight is unengaging because the fight is unengaged. Our bloodlust is unreciprocated. So we kind of got to change why we fight him. Is this the most important thing in the world? No, but Monster Hunter cares a lot more about its narrative now. So this is something the developers would want to address. We can do one of three things here. The first is to keep the aspect of fleeing in the fight, but change his response. 
Lao Shen Lung is still running from Fatalis, or whatever the final boss of the game is, but this time he won't let himself be deterred. When we take up arms to repel him, he will not accept it, fighting tooth and nail to preserve his life and smash down the fortress. This would have to remove the repel component of the fight to make sense. The second thing you could do is make Lao the aggressor. Perhaps the fortress was built on his ancient territory. Perhaps he believes that the giant walls and structures are other large animals encroaching on his mountains. He attacks us because he believes that we are a threat to his home, and he begins a territorial dispute. And the third option is to explain his aggressiveness via variant. In a similar manner that Crimson Glow Volstrax is a more aggressive, more brutal version of Volstrax due to the dragon element running rampant in his body. Whatever version of Lao Shen Lung we face would have to be more aggressive than his contemporaries due to whatever the nature of the variant is. With that roadblock out of the way, let's address another major component of his fight. The arena. We're actually not going to change it. Not much, at least. We're going to restrict ourselves to the same general hallway-esque corridors that he lumbers down on his way to the front gates. I honestly think this restriction serves as a benefit. Limits like this promote creativity. So, instead of going wild and upending the entire encounter, putting him in the middle of a big wide area or something like that, let's use what we have to our advantage. Lao Shen Lung is strong and durable. Now, we can't make him fast and we can't make him elemental, but we can make him cunning. And what we can do here is prey upon the trained behavior that players have towards the Lao encounter to the benefit of the monster. Typically, a fight against Lao Shen Lung has some hunters on the ground with heavy weapons at his belly, more or less just smacking him in the crotch, while one or two other players pelt him with siege weaponry, just kind of following him along the corridor dealing damage while he shambles down the hallway. The trick here is to make your hunters work to earn this weak spot and punish them if they get too greedy with it. First and foremost, we're working with a big monster in a narrow space. Let's use that. You know those along the ground, big horizontal bite attacks that Rykard uses in Elden Ring? Use something like that. Keep his head low. Use the space against the hunters. Keep them out. Horn thrust, bite attacks, foot stomps, stuff like that. We want to keep our guys on the ground on the back foot. Keep them on the defensive. Don't let them move with Lao, let Lao push them back. Keep them on his armored head and forelegs. Have Lao be smart enough to put the parts of his body that deflect blows in front of the blades. To serve this purpose, we would probably need to make the corridors a little narrower and or make Lao bigger. As is, there's a lot of room around at the sides to get under him and start attacking. I think the encounter would benefit from a bit more claustrophobia. If we want to prevent Lao from getting smacked in the stomach over and over, we should probably make it a little harder to get to his underside. As well as make it a little bit easier for him to clear hunters out if they do manage to get through his defenses and get under him. We don't want to make it impossible for hunters to get under his stomach that they're perpetually stuck in front of his face. That could get a little bit boring. If they're persistent enough, they should be rewarded with getting to the weak spot. But he should be able to keep them out and then get them out with a higher degree of ease. Fights like this can typically feel a bit on rails. A little too scripted, repetitive. That's usually what causes them to lose their luster. And I have a couple of ideas I want to share about creating what I think would be a fun loop. But first I want to elaborate a little bit more about what Lao himself should do. Because despite the fact that I think I have a few neat mechanics to try and sprinkle in to create an interesting experience, it's really all window dressing if Lao Shen Lung doesn't engage. That's been the downfall of his fight in the past. All the neat stuff we can do, the big cannons and the guns on train track rails and getting on his back to drop bombs on him, that's just half of the encounter. It doesn't really mean anything if Lao Shen Lung isn't fun. Safi Jiva and Kolb Taroth are pretty on rails as well, but nobody really complains about that because they have a nice slew of attacks they can use. As I stated earlier, I think a good way to approach a Lao Shan Lung fight where he's constantly moving forwards is to have him fight with a sort of oppressive defense. If hunters try to get in, 
he keeps them out. He'd keep his head at ground level, fill the arena space up with his bite attacks, sweeps of his head back and forth, try to impale hunters on his horn, create tremors by stomping his feet, give him a knockback effect on his roar like Rajang has, let him slam walls to create rock slides that are more targeted than the ones he has now. You gotta give him a bunch of tools that he can use to keep his stomach safe, and will consistently keep him moving forwards. The Hunters will fight for what opportunities they have to stab at him, but they rarely get the chance to fully be aggressive. And when they do, Lao will always have an ability to get them out from under him. I think a body slam with a several second warning window that deals catastrophic damage and ignores blocking properties so your hunters have to get out of there would probably be the best way to do this. A technique like that would let you get in under him and then give a mechanic where it resets you back to your initial starting position. And then the forward march going onwards would resume. I think taking an approach like this would make Lao feel bigger, smarter, more alive, more tenacious, more terrifying. Yeah, it's kinda cool to walk alongside the huge dragon in the mountains. It is a bit intimidating when his shadow appears in the fog and breaks through to reveal his colossal size. But imagine being frightened to get near him. That's not really an effect he has right now. You gotta get right up in front of those jaws and that horn and that sheer power of a creature that big and it is right up in your face bearing down on you not giving you an inch actively persistently trying to annihilate you you're not attacking it you're in a consistent retreat, throwing in what shots you can. All you really can do is stay alive and buy time. Imagine being scared to face Lao Shenlong, being nervous to be the one down in the pit. Doesn't that sound fun as <laughs> That sounds really fun. We've never been scared of this guy once the fight proper gets going. And I think some of the stuff that I've suggested here is a good minimum you would need to do to make Lau a fun fight. Utilization of his size, the way he fills the arena, and an actual moveset to use against the Hunters. That's the most important stuff. But I still want to throw out a couple more ideas that could maybe make this fight a little bit more interesting on top of that. I had the idea of the siege weapon hunters and the hunters on the ground working in tandem to create the openings that one another needs to operate. Have both groups be important in maintaining the flow of the fight and minimizing the danger that the others would be in. You know how when fighting Zhen and Darren Moran, you'd use the hunting gong and dragonator and ballista binder to interrupt their bigger attacks and cancel them out to make sure that they don't hit the boat? Or in Iceborne, where a certain amount of cannon and ballista shots would get a knockdown on Fatalis. I think the Lao Shen Lung fight would stand to benefit from a mechanic kind of like that. You already can flinch him with the damage you do in output from siege weapons, but let's bake it just a little bit more into the formula. So we give him this unrelenting death march of a moveset, constantly driving the hunters back. Well, their salvation would come in the form of the hunters using siege weapons. The hunters manning the cannons and ballista would be tasked with keeping up the barrage, maintaining a steady stream of damage to the point where Lao flinches. This would be the relief that the hunters on the ground need to recover, and the opportunity for them to get under his stomach and attack Lao's weak point and maximize their damage. I think what this would do is create this symbiotic loop that incentivizes actual planning and multiplayer cooperation, both of which are core aspects of the game's DNA and really important to Monster Hunter, especially with these bigger fights. The Siege Hunters need guys on the ground to keep Lao's attention away from the fortress's weapons. The Hunters on the ground need the guys manning the defenses to give them the openings needed to strike. You could play with a team of two or three, solo if you're good enough. You could go full ground war or full siege if you wanted. The game would allow you to go with these other options, obviously. But the path that the fight is designed around should be designed for collaboration and teamwork. We need fights like this. They're important for Monster Hunter and a lot of fun.
You could have a mechanic where if Lao Shan Lung isn't being attacked consistently enough by hunters on the ground, he more aggressively targets the siege engines. You could have cannons and ballista with various shot types like their counterparts in Rise do. You could put the siege weapons at a higher elevation and have Lao rearing up on his hind legs be the way he counterattacks against players on cannons, which would in turn give the hunters on the ground even more opportunity to attack him while he's distracted. It would be this kind of hot potato tossing back and forth of Lao Shan Lung's attention that allows for consistent damage and the ability for the team being beaten down by Lao's onslaught to recover. How wild would it be if Lao Shan Lung was one of the most intense, high stakes, coordination dependent monsters? Who would have ever expected that? ending of this fight is where you could take the core gameplay of the initial phases and just have fun with it. Just go full spectacle. The fortress has these bridges with train tracks all over it to move the cannons around. Make this last phase a full-on kaiju movie, for all I care. Let them burst through the bridge, limiting the movement of the cannons, maybe trapping them beyond the reach of a player. Let him tear the tracks off the side of the castle. If you're not being careful, have him pull the mobile cannons off the tracks themselves and let him throw the cannons at the hunters. One by one, your defenses and options get ripped asunder and shredded to pieces. You're slowly running out of answers as he gets closer and closer to the gate. You can no longer afford to manage just your hunting team. You gotta keep the defenses functioning as long as possible. Basically, I'm saying put Godzilla in Monster Hunter. I... I gotta imagine Lao Shan Lung takes some resemblance from him. Look at how he towers over everything on his hind legs. Look at some of this immaculate official art from the old days. This is the vision, and this vision can 100% be a reality. This is attainable. I firmly believe that Lao Shan Lung can be a top tier encounter. Tense, destructive, claustrophobic, daunting, perilous. I believe I have no power, no authority, and I lack the millions of dollars to give to Capcom to make this a reality. But I believe. <laughs> Maybe one day. Alrighty, folks. So, this was a fun experiment. That was what I would do to make Lao Shen Lung fun. What do you think? How would you change him? Was I on the money? Did I overthink it? Did I not get wild enough? Do you want to see Lao Shen Lung again? And as I asked earlier, what monsters would you love to love? But for whatever reason, they just don't quite click with you. Not yet, at least. I'll totally make this a series if you guys enjoy it. But for now, hit like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you want to see more, hit the notification bell if you actually want to see more. Every little bit of interaction helps. You guys are the best. This has been CR Volcanic, or Connor. Have a good one. Oh, and you know what else? You ever listen to the, um, the live orchestra anniversary versions of the music that they do? You know that, like, really, really cool bit with the organ that they do for Lao Shan Lung? Yeah, it's kind of like this little backing bit. It's kind of just mixes into the background with the main melody of the music. They never have done that, like, on its own. And it's the coolest piece of music. And it's never been an official soundtrack. You want to make Lao Shan Lung really good? Put that bit of organ in there. F*** everything else I've said in this video. J that bit. I want that bit. I want that bit of music. That's how you make Lao Shan Lung good. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>